Okay, so let's see how this goes. And so you can do some CELO uh, theorem stuff to look at the possible CELO uh, subgroups, right? But we're only actually going to need one type of them. And so let's notice that uh, 60 is equal to what? 2 squared times 3 times 5, right? So that means we've got CELO 2, CELO 3, and CELO 5 subgroups. And we've got more than one of all of them because otherwise if you only have one CELO subgroup it's simple, right? Okay, so we have more than one, one of all CELO P subgroups because G is simple. Okay, so we got that written down, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, if N5 equals the number of CELO 5 subgroups, then what do we know about the what do we know about N5? So N5 has to do what two things? Um, it has to divide um, what? We're in 60, so it's to divide 12. 20, yeah, 12. Good. 12 and But now putting those two things together, what's, uh, what's the possibility? So, and it's not equal to one, right? Um, it's not equal to one because simple. Be simple yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the only possibility? Um, yeah, so N5 is six. Okay, great. So that's, that's, our, that's our start. Okay, so now let maybe P1, P2 up to P5. So if it's only possible it is 6, can't we just say like it actually is 6? You know what I mean? No, it is 6. Yeah. There, there are 6 of them. Yeah, yeah. but it wouldn't. Uh, if there's, yeah. There's 6 of them. I think you said the word possible, but I could just be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I probably did say it's only possibility is 6. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, B, the. the CELO five subgroups, okay? So we've done that. 